Okay, motivation in under eight minutes. Now, the biggest theory, and probably I think the best one, is Maslow's hierarchy. We need to quickly look at that. So Maslow said that all human beings have the same fundamental needs, starting with to survive. We do anything to survive. We are lucky, at least in the Western world, that survival isn't normally an issue. So we tend to start with the second level up, which is security. So security is a big issue to us. We want to make sure that our income is going to be safe in the future and that our job is safe. So the theory is that if you're a manager, if you try to motivate people by making them insecure and saying things like nobody's indispensable, you know, then people will worry about their security and they'll ignore the other three levels above, which are the good ones. They're the important ones. So don't make people feel insecure because otherwise they're going to give up on things like caring, being creative, looking after customers, doing good quality work. They're going to forget all that because they're just covering themselves. So make people feel secure and we'll come to how to do that in a minute. The next level of Maslow is social needs. People want to feel a sense of belonging. So things like team meetings, somewhere nice where people can meet and eat food together, make people feel part of the company. The next level is ego needs, status, so give them ownership of something that's theirs so they feel important. And then the final ultimate level, which is where we want to get everyone up to really, is self-actualization. This is really self-fulfillment. So Maslow said that everybody wants to be the best they can be. So we can encourage this by teaching people things, giving them a chance to use their skills, giving them challenges so they feel a sense of achievement. And Maslow said that's the ultimate. So as a boss, you need to give people all of these things, and particularly we want to keep them at the top where they're self-actualizing. Now, the second theory I want to show you to do with motivation says that actually people are different and that people have different things that drive them. And the idea of this is that you've got introvert people, you've got extrovert people, and you've got people who mainly make their decisions by logic and people who are more emotional in their decision making. So you get four types. So here you've got analytical people. So these people are motivated by everything being neat and tidy, organized, give them good equipment, give them clear rules, and then let them just get on and work. So engineers and accountants are like this. They're not interested in status or power. They're really interested, I suppose you could say, in self-actualization. So I'm gonna put analytical people there. The second type of person over here is the controller. So this person is much more extrovert, but also logical. And they're interested in things like results. So to motivate them, you just give them freedom and authority just to get on with the work without rules. And so they're more to do with status, but also results. And I would say the controller is sort of here on Maslow. The third one, also extrovert, but much more emotional, is what some people call the enthusiast. And the enthusiast is motivated by fun and excitement and a vision of the future and being part of a group of people who are all doing exciting things. So for them, it's social, but with a certain amount of ego as well. And that's the enthusiast. And by the way, because this one's higher up, we're not saying it's better, they're just different. And finally, you've got the amiable people who are also emotional in their decision-making, but they're much more introvert. And they're motivated by feeling secure and feeling part of a team. They want everyone to be happy and everybody to be working together. And they like that feeling of belonging. So that's the amiable. So the idea is to give everybody everything, but really focus in on the things that that particular personality type is going to be motivated by. Now, there's one more model of motivation I want to quickly show you. It's very, very simple. I invented it, the management potato. And this basically says that most people are fine in their job, but they have areas of excellence and they have areas where they're not so good. And most managers tend to focus on the problem, but all that does is depress people and they'll just do less and less because they'll feel they're criticized and their performance will reduce until their potato becomes a prune. So people don't respond well to criticism, even though we think criticism is going to fix problems. Much better to focus on what they're good at and encourage them to do more of that and to be supportive about the problems. We can't ignore the problems, but if we're supportive about the problems and encourage them to have another go and we say, look, I'm going to help you to get better. I'm going to teach you this because you can do it. Hopefully they'll do more of that. And we want to grow the potato into a great big pumpkin rather than criticizing people down into a prune. So thanking people and giving them recognition is really important to grow their management potato.
Now, finally, I just want to give you a list of seven things you can do to motivate people. Seven things that give you all of Maslow and which work on all the personality types. And the first one, following on from the potato, is to thank people. Make sure that at least once a week you find something good that they've done and you tell them. And that will make them feel more secure, make them feel part of everything. It's great for their ego. And also they can get self-actualization because they know they've done a good job if somebody tells them. So thanking people is really, really important. Much more valuable than criticizing people or telling them off. The second thing you can do is communicate. Be obsessive about communicating. And communicating takes a little bit of time, but just tell people what's going on. And not just talking, but listening. Because if you listen to people, that makes them feel part of things, belonging, makes them feel more secure because you're interested, makes them feel important, means that they've contributed to the results. So communication, telling them what's going on so they feel safe, but also listening to them is incredibly vital. Now, the third thing you can do that makes people feel really motivated is involve them as much as you can in your decisions. So people love it if they can have a say in what's going on. And it's not that difficult just to say, what do you think about this? Do you have any views? So make sure you involve people. Even if you know the right answer, make sure you ask other people because you might not be right or they might have an even better answer. So involvement is the next thing that gives people everything. You can see how involving is going to make people feel important, make them feel part of things. They then feel they've had a say in what's happened. It has to be good. And then link to involvement, there's ownership. So not just asking them what they think, but giving them an area of work that is theirs, something that's theirs. So everybody should own something because then they know that they were the ones who got the results for that and they feel important because it's theirs. Even if you give them ownership of something quite small, make sure that they know that something is theirs. Then the next thing you can do that's guaranteed to motivate people is training. I would say this, I'm a bit biased. But if you train people, it gives them the skills to get self-actualization and they feel more secure because you're not going to waste money on someone you're going to get rid of next week. So training is absolutely great for all the different levels of Maslow. So my second last thing that you can do to motivate anybody is get to know them. Get to know them as people, know about their personal life, what's happening with their family and things. Not too nosy, but get to know them as a person because then they'll feel more secure and they'll feel more part of things. And also they'll feel more valued and important because you, the boss, are spending time with them. And then I think my final tip is fairness. Try to treat everybody the same. Now, I know that means adapting to their personality, but don't have favorites. Now, some people may need more help or less help, but you're giving them the same amount of help relative to their ability level. So try to be as fair as you can and try to be the same every day. Don't have moods where you're in a bad mood one day or you're more critical one day. Try to be, and this is really difficult, but a great motivator would always be positive and would treat everybody equally. So there we are, motivation in under eight minutes.